I'm going to show you how to set up your student registration fields. When a student comes to take a course, they need to create an account in the system. As an administrator, you have the ability to decide which fields they're filling in so that you can record these in the back end of the system and keep them in the database. The GoSignMeUp system allows you to pick and choose and customize what fields you have and which ones are required. For instance, perhaps you want to track what department everybody in your um, taking trainings is in. In order to do so, you need to ask your students and track which department they belong to. You can, um, in order to do this, go into the back end of your GoSignMIP system. Remember that is your URL plus index.asp. You're going to be given a login. Once you've entered in your login, you're going to go to the student reg the system configuration in the configuration dropdown where it says student registration fields and configuration you want to click on that and you'll see a long list of all the possible student registration fields you can turn them on or turn them off as appropriate or customize them the first the first thing you'll see are some very special student registration fields which I'll come back to in a minute these are the, the student registration fields that are, are in a drop-down and they are tied to other things in the system. You'll see a column called visible and then the label and whether it's required and then the sort order that it's in or displays into the public. Then whether or not you want it to be read only, in other words um, the student cannot edit it but it's put in by the administrator and then um, it, whether there needs to be a confirmation, which is really only, um, only applies to a very few number of student registration fields. So right now, these top three are special. And if you would like these dropdowns to be uh, edited, then you would go up here to the top and edit them here. Um, moving on, though, password is one that is required no matter what. People do have to generate a username and a password. And there are a number of what we call, so there's no option here to make this visible. It is mandatory that everybody generates a username and password to create an account. The rest are more optional. So for instance, your first name, you can always update what it's called here, if you want to call it something else. And this is the order that it is visible on the public side. So for instance, here the very first one says first name, the second one is last name, so this is when it says sort order, that's what it's referring to. The first one's first name, the second one's last, last name, and then it moves on to username and password. One, two, three, four. When you see a mask over here, it means that it has to fit into a specific rule. In other words, people have to have you utilize this rule for their username or whatever it is over here. So for example, we're making students in this example use their email as their username. So right here where it says username, they don't have an option and their email address is used. Once they type in their email, it's going to use it to be their username. I highly recommend utilizing email address as a username because most often people will forget their usernames and if we tell them it's their email address then it'll be much easier for them to remember. Also, most people can have unique email addresses and you don't need to worry about um, usernames already existing in the system. And um, it will not allow more than one person to have the same username but um, it, it just helps eliminate confusion for your users. Moving on down, any of these items can be made visible to the public and required. Just from experience, I can say that most often if it's not required, people will not fill it out. So if you really want to have that field on there, then be sure to, um, be sure to make it required. And down here at the bottom, you'll see lots of customizable fields as well 
that you can type in anything that you like. There's up to, oh, I believe there's 20 customizable fields and a number of masks. So if you're asking for birth dates or our genders, there might be some masks already in there for them to choose from. A yes, no selection. And this one right here where it says selection, you can actually decide whether you want a checkbox or a single list or a multi-select list. In other words, um, what what is your area of expertise? And you can type in a bunch of different choices and they can just choose one or choose many. Or you can have them select from a checkbox. Be sure to apply it and save this at the bottom once you've done making all your selections. I'm going to there are also some read-only fields that you can put in as administrators. Perhaps you're doing their hire date, things like that that you're inputting from the back end, either from an LDAP or HR Active Directory system or that you're hand entering in yourself. And there's also some that you can keep on the administrative side that are not visible to the public. Moving on to the most important registration fields way back at the top are these three um, drop downs that we lovingly like to call district, school, and grade level, although because it, it helps to illustrate the way they can tie into each other. So this can be a larger, uh, a large, let's say, department, division, geographic area. And if you want to edit it, you would click on the name of it and then you can um, call it something else like district and set up. These are very special. These are drop downs that people have to select one. And they show throughout the system if you want to set up a supervisor based upon a district or a school or a grade level or an organization or a company, then it's really important that you use one of these two top drop downs. So I'm just going to use district for right now so you can see how it ties into it. Also, if you're going to be giving special pricing, for a specific type of company, organization, school, department, then we need to make sure it's in one of these items here and we can set up a certain kind of membership into that group of special pricing based upon that. For many of you, you won't need to utilize this tool, but I did want to just make sure that you were clear about why they're special. The other, and it's very similar to setting up the other roles, you can, the other fields, you can type in them in here and then choose their sort order when they're visible on the public page. The second one can tie into or filter into the first one. So for instance, if I wanted to make this into a school within a district, I'm updating this field title to say school instead of job title. Um, when I create a school, a new school, I can call it School A. Then I can select the different district that it's in. And again, I just updated that, but use your imagination. You can see that if I wanted any particular school to only be visible if this first district was picked, that's how I would do it. Same, this is again, it's a customizable field, and you can choose company, division, department, geographic area, whatever it is that you like. If you'd like to see a list of all of, well, like I just let, edited it to say school, sometimes we call this drop down number two, you can see everything that's here and all the districts that they are assigned to, or they don't have to be assigned to any and they will be um, visible only if somebody um, selects that one. So just for illustration purposes, I'm going to make some of these only apply to different districts and you'll see how this reacts when a student comes in. And um, just to let you know, once this has been saved here, you can also see that you can force membership based upon one of these two drop down areas. And you can also see later on how many students in the system have these um, assignments. There's a number of reports in the system that are tied to these very special three drop downs and uh, as well as, like I said, supervisors, people who are in charge of a group of people who can within any of these schools and districts or companies or organizations. So I'm going to go back to my student original student registration field and you'll see that this 
department and job title has now been switched to district and school. See that updated there? And if I were to choose human resources and I give it a, a second to kick in and know um, it's looking now to see only the schools that were associated to that there. Once you've made all of your changes in the student registration area, you can come back here and go back to the student registration fields. There's a number of other um, items that are, are housed here in the student registration field area of the student um, of, of the system configuration, including whether or not we're going to allow them to edit their passwords or have administrators be able to see passwords and are we going to prevent them from editing their usernames? There's certain situations that I would certainly want you to ask your implementation specialist about if you had any special needs, um, but there are a, several other settings here within the student registration field area that you might want to take a look at and see if they apply to you. Um, there are some items down here that will set up your defaults for your sign-in sheets because when you print any sign-in sheets they're automatically going to be pulling currently the district school and grade level but let's say I want to change that to email make sure that you've turned email on as one of your student registration fields for that to work and then when you're done with all of that go ahead and update it there are some fields in here that you do not apply to most people for instance this one here at the bottom um, but you can always take a look at it or let your name or also look in the help guide uh, about student registration fields for some more information about it. So thank you so much and please let us know at GoSignBook if you have any questions.